All right, let us go ahead and add the forces that we see right here. So let us assume that we're going to be having two forces attached to this ring. Um, they could be steel lines, they could be rope, um, whatever it is, but we can have a bridge over here. Um, but we're given that we have this force one and this force two. Okay, so at this point we only know that we have two forces and if we do, if we want to do some computations, we have to know what are their actual values. So let's say this is 100 newtons and this is 150 newtons. All right, so we have those two forces, but also we have to know some other stuff. So this is going to be the origin, meaning that this is going to be X and Y. So zero, zero is right here, uh, but we don't know anything about this. For we know the magnitude, but we don't know the direction. So the exact direction is given by the angle. So this is 50 degrees. And they're telling us that this is 10 degrees. Okay. So, of course, it's going to be 90 degrees between X and Y because it's ortho orthogonal. Um, so, if this is 10 and this is 15, then we're going to have that 90 minus 10 is 80, minus 15 is 65 degrees. So, this right here is 65 degrees. Okay. So, one thing that we want to know is that there is a very important rule that is called the sine rule. Um, so, let's go ahead and, or the sine law, let's go ahead and have it up here. So, when you have a triangle, okay, and then you have, say, A, B, and C for the angles. Obviously, A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. Okay, that has to be the case for a triangle to be true. All right, so if we have that this is A, this is B, and this is C, this is the longest, this is the hypotenuse if you want, this is this is not a right hand triangle. This is not a 90 degree angle. So this is just the longest side C. The sine law, so sine law, says that A divided by sine of A, this is the function, the trigonometric function. And it's very simple to remember. It's the side and the angle is the one across it. Okay. So the, the one across C is C, obviously, and the one across B is B, capital B, lowercase b. So B is the force or the vector, and lowercase b is the angle. Okay. Um, it would be a uh, to add my, there you go. B equals C sine C. All right, so what it says is that that no matter what length A and B and C are, and no matter the angles between A and C and B, this ratio is always true. The ratio between side A and the sine of the angle is equal to the side B divided by the side, uh, sine of the angle. Okay, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is in order to know C, we simply have to do the operation where we have square root of A squared plus B squared minus two times A times B times cosine of C. Okay? This is how you find the length of C. 
c is square root of a everything within the square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times 3 cosine of, of c okay so going back to the example we have two routes we can do two things here one is that we do with a component of each force which that would be force one goes into force one x force one y and force two goes into force two x works to force two y and this is simply if you know if you know this um let's see where is my calculator you have this type of uh, triangle here right okay so basically what we have is a triangular shape that says f1 has components in x and y and f2 has components in x and y too to get those things we simply do cosine or f1 times cosine let's do this better We have to do the force, the magnitude, times cosine of the angle, and F1 times sine the angle. And this is F2 times cosine of the angle. So what's the angle? 15 plus 65, that's 80, equals F2 times sine of 80. Remember, this has to be degrees, because if you do rate, uh, gradients, it's going to be the wrong answer. Okay, so if you take your calculator and you do those operations, you're going to have something like 96.6. I'm approximating, so you go ahead and do the, the values yourself. 25.88. This is going to be around 26. This is going to be 147.72. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is that remember that the total f and x is going to be the component of x and 1 and the component in x of f2. So if x is going to be f1x plus f2x and f y is going to be f one y plus f two y and we have all those four things so the total force in x is going to be one twenty two point six approximately and on y is going to be one seventy three dot six approximately so get to get the total force between those two, which will be a line somewhere around here. The total force is square root of fx squared plus fy squared. And that is, let me check my calculator. Is two twelve point five two hundred and twelve point five newtons. Okay, so this is how you do that force um, summation, vector summation. But the other way is to do with trigonometry. So depending on which way you want to do it, it's a simpler. So if it's only two forces, trigonometry is going to be the simplest way to do it. If you have three, four, five, six forces, I think it would be simplest if you do something like this because then you just add up all your forces in X and all your forces in Y. But this example with uh, trigonometry is going to be like so. So if you bring your forces to the same origin,
and then you form you form um, and you close them with the same um, force so basically this is f1 and this is f2 you simply move f1 up here and f2 up here so you just copy them and when you close the shape this hypotenuse or this diagonal is the total force so this method is very useful for only when you have two forces so when you so this is f1 and this is f2 and you copy them and whenever they close they match they sh close the geometry the, 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 the diagonal between those two points is the total force. So in our case, we have something like, let's go to our case, we have origin and we have X and Y and we have one force here and we have one force here. So if we move that there, we're gonna have it here and we, we move F2 we're gonna have it here. That's supposed to be a straight line. F1, F2, F1, F2. Okay, so when we go to our total force, it's gonna be something like this. F total. Okay, so our total force, I'm gonna move down just a little. The total force is going to be something like from the origin we have F1 with, with respect to X is 15 degrees and from the origin we have F2 which this is 15 and this is 65 and this whole thing is 85 so F2, F1, and then when we close our shape, we have F1 and F2. Okay, so we have a total force right here. We just draw, we just uh, drawing it again. This is total force, and this angle is basically. 360 so that this is 65 so that angle plus that angle plus those those four angles have to give us 360 degrees so we have 65 times 2 so we can do this thing 360 minus 65 minus 65 because if this one is 65, then this one is 65, okay? But then we only need this part, so divided by 2. And that will give us 115 degrees. So if we put our forces again in the plane with respect to x, f2, F1, sorry, this is F total, and this is F2. Let me do it again. This is a little complicated part to draw, so I apologize. So our axis is here, and let's draw two forces right here. So F1, we're going to place the copy of F2 right here. And now our total force goes from the origin to here, F total. So we know that this part right here is 115. Because we just found out that this is 65 and this is 65 so what is this this from here to here is 65 right this whole thing is 65 
So we have to find our angle here. So what we're missing, let's say this is, um, I don't know, letter C. Let, letter C is 115 degrees. And that's because 350, 360 degrees minus 65 minus 65 is 115. Divided by 2 because we only need 1. So it's 115 here and 115 there. If you didn't divide by 2, you will find the amount of angle here plus the amount of angle here. Okay, so we have this. All right, so in that case, what we can do is go back to our sine, um, sine law, which is up here. A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C, where a C is going to be our total force and A and B are going to be our 100 and 150 newtons. So in other words, if we draw the triangle by itself, this C, our total force now, and this is, let's say A, which is F1, this is B, which is F2, and this is 115, which is C. Okay, so the formula says that C, the total force, is going to be square root of A squared, so 100 squared, 100 newtons squared, plus 150 newtons squared, minus minus 2 times A times B times cosine of C, minus 2 times A times, or, well, A is 100 newtons times B, which is 150 newtons times cosine of C, or cosine of 115. all that together and that gives us 212.6 newtons 212.6 newtons and what we get up here is 112.5 newtons so we get around the same answer you just choose which one you like better so if it's only two vectors this one is pretty straightforward if it's only is more than two then you should do all the components x and y and so um, add them together and the summation the square root of that okay now if they're asking to find they're asking us to find this angle right here that should be pretty easy because we know that the whole thing is 65 but we're not quite sure this is not the middle this is not no, 65 divided by 2 we don't know how much this is we're asking we want to find how much this angle right here is. Okay, so we just want to find this angle. And then we can use the sine law again to do that. So remember, if we know C and sine, if we know the total force and the angle, which is 115, then we can find the ratio because we have the forces 100 and 115. So we just have to know what angle corresponds to that. So that's the angle across B, so 115. 150 newtons I mean so we can do that 150 newtons divided by the unknown which is sine of theta is equal to the force that we just found out about 212 newtons divided by sine of 115 okay so if you find that answer that was basically the sine of theta equals 212.6 newtons divided by 150 newtons times sine of 115. Let me see how much that is. So let's do 212.6 divided by 150. I'm using my calculator right now. 
and this is sign one fifteen. Okay, so that whole thing sine of theta equals one point three eight four. So to find theta, we have to do sine inverse of one point twenty eight four. And sine inverse of that Something's wrong. I did something wrong because this thing is. Oh, my bad. I apologize. I did this wrong. Let me go back. Wow. This is a huge mistake. I'm not being careful. So, what happened here is that I'm not being careful. I forgot how to, how to add and multiply, didn't I? So, let me do this part again. Yeah, you're right. This is completely wrong. So, what we have to do is, let me see, sign. So we want to find out is the theta. So 150 plus times sine of 115 equals 2 12.6 times sine of theta. Yeah, that's more like it. So 150 times sine of 115 divided by 2.12.6 is equal to sine of theta. There you go. So we have to do that part again. So 150 divided by 2.26 times sine of 115 is 0.639 equals 0.639. Okay, and the sine inverse of that is there you go 99 39.7 39.7 degrees so this is true okay so i had a pretty bad fluke right there um you have to find the angle and i did that part wrong so i apologize the answer is 99 39.7 degrees that is the angle right here. This angle between the force F1 with respect to the total force. Okay, so that angle is 39.7. And then you can find this angle basically by being that is the same, right? And in order to find this angle right here, which we can call A, A is equal to, well, if you know if you notice 180. Is equal to 115 plus a plus 39.7. Therefore, a is 180 minus 115 minus 39.7. So 180 minus 115 minus 39.7 minus what's going on here? There we go, 